All right, hi. What's your name? Uh, Kevin Stebbings. Kevin. So what do you think about tonight's event with Sam Harris and Jordan Peterson? I think it was actually quite productive. Yeah? I think it was mostly productive because of Brett. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. I, th I think uh, he did an amazing job yeah, as a moderator. Uh, they, I think Jordan and and Sam have such widely divergent cognitive biases in some ways, they really can't understand each other. And Brett was able to, after listening to them for a little while, say the thing that everyone was thinking that finally brought them together. And the, one of the biggest examples of that, I think, was this assertion that the rate of change itself is really what's causing a lot of the conflict in the old value structures and the new value structures and the discussion itself. The, the simple rate of change of reality is causing all these things to come into question. And that has its underpinnings in strategies which are adaptive over the short term and the long term. So there's a lot of evolutionary strategies will seem adaptive over short term. Wait, wait, wait which speakers are you going to make right now? So I think it's more it's more Brett's point right. <laughs> than either of theirs. Okay. I think it's the point that they both should have been making right. that Brett tried to make for so them. So you were you were cheering for a moderator more than two speakers. I in the end in the beginning I was probably cheering for Jordan if I'm honest, right. mostly because he's the underdog. But then by the end I was probably cheering for Brett. Okay. Yeah. What, what makes you think he's the underdog? Well, I, I think Sam's positions are not, in some ways not controversial in the intellectual sphere. And I'm, fr I'm from the intellectual sphere, and Jordan's points are not at all accepted. So I cheer for the underdog just because they probably have something of value to do. Do you really think their position of their, we shouldn't throw out religion altogether, there's some useful, uh, like Jordan position saying that there's some value to religion, and generalizing Sam saying, taking a counter position to that, don't you think the counter position is more unpopular, more controversial? Not not in the circles I run, but I run in the university circles. And actually, I probably would have been 100%, if not more extreme than Sam in the past, until I met or heard Jordan Peterson. In which case, I started to realize that actually there might be some value to these stories. And it was only when he was able to translate those stories into the way that a rational mind can understand. That's to me the whole value of Jordan Peterson. Is because I'm a very scientist, I'm like Sam, I'm a scientist. And I don't understand the right? Uh, neuroscientist. Neuroscience. Yeah. So I don't think that way. Jordan is able to bridge these very, very abstracted stories into somewhat rational and almost evolutionarily based ways of understanding how to go. Do you think that was their original intent? I think it was Jordan's original intent. So he's making a new thing. It's not what they were. It's what he wants to make. It's what he is, right? So Jordan, it is what he is to do this type of thing. Right. Right. This is literally what he is, and it's just that everyone discovered him being what he was and found it interesting. But why do that with a, with a bunch of books that have caused so much problem? Why not so do it with a different book? I'm not sure that he's entirely doing that. That might be a misrepresentation at this point. I think his point, as far as I understand, is that there is a type of truth in these stories that is relevant particularly to that, which is which, given how much attention he's getting, seems a self-evident point. People are searching for some sort of meaning, which is what he's about, and that's what those stories, according to him, hold. And Sam is saying more like, they come at a big cost, and there's a certain line that we shouldn't cross, and that is that there's this omniscient of God, and these things are absolutely true, and Jordan's saying, I agree with that, I don't think that that is necessary, and I think it's bad. And I felt like they danced around that point for quite a while, do, don't you, what would you say to the claim that this is just the last desperate attempt at trying to save a dying ideology and you're just, they're just trying to redefine it in a way that it will keep it relevant, but this is how ideologies come and go and they're not useful and these are just the last... I think, I think there's more depth to that question than, than either of us realize. I think that actually is the core of the question. When you say death of an ideology, I think actually what we're really talking about is death of people. I think there's a lot of people who realize that as the world is changing, they might not have a place in it. And they're 
reaching back to what they say are religious ways of thinking to try and find their place and reground themselves. But I would argue that those ways of thinking are actually evolutionary and they're group and they're group competition based. So it's we're gonna form we're not really interested in like going to the wayside and not having a place in modern society, so we're gonna form a group and destroy the thing that is slowly weeding us out. And this is all happening subconsciously. So what they're saying is that you know, we're asserting our religious rights and our interest in religion, but really the deep subconscious is just self-survival. And it's and they do that by forming the group. But, but isn't that a, a more more about uh, the evolution and survival of the tribe rather than the individual, and is something that is good for the tribe doesn't doesn't always mean that it's good for the individual, right? So sometimes, so this is this is another awesome question, right? So like, this is a point which they should have talked about in the debate, which they did not, which is an evolutionary theory. There's there's a debate about whether selection operates on the level of the individual or on the level of the group, and the truth is it probably operates on both. Right? And where that competition between what's good for the individual and what, what's good for the group happens is where a lot of this cognitive dissonance and this whole, like the whole space of this debate, if you ask me, exists within that question of what's good for the individual versus what's good for the group, and what's good in short term short term strategies versus long term strategies. So Christianity might have some, because of, like, Jordan always mentions about, Jordan and his fans talk about the fact that these things survived for so long, so there must be some value to them. But the, 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 the reason might be that there was value for the survival of the tribe, but not necessarily good for the individual. Well, I, th I think that the larger point is, and this might be Sam's point, which I think harkens back to the naturalistic fallacy, which is that just because behaving in this type of way allowed groups to survive does not necessarily mean that it's desirable. So it's humans is all. So this, this works, that does not mean that it ought to be. And I think that... And I think the problem that everyone is having on a deep psychological level is what happens if what ought to be doesn't include you? Right, right. And then, and then you start to say, well, you find any way for it to include you. So don't you think Jordan is making the naturalistic fallacy by saying that this, this is not this is? I think if he were making the argument that Sam wanted it, it would be, but I don't think he was ever asserting that these things were right because they existed. I think he was, what he was asserting is that they had some value and some role in the future. And, and that, those are separate questions. Whether they have some value, uh, some utility in the future, and whether they are the right way to act are not the same question. He hasn't yet pre presented those values yet. He's just assuming that there must be some value because they have been with us for so long. Has he ever presented what those values are that are in that from religion? No. I think you probably have. One of them would probably be duty. I think one of the things that came up, well, sacrifice, uh, sacrifice of the present and the future. But that's more more about, as you pointed out, that his that's his religion, not necessarily what the religion was. So the idea that this, because the, the, this, the, what, the way he defines God and sacrifice, we, we, as we discussed, it wasn't originally written for the, that's how he's bringing something new, right? So if he's bringing in something new, the argument that it, the religion was there for so long and therefore that has value, that goes out the window because his religion is completely different from what the original intention. When, when people were writing the Bible, they were I don't believe that he was saying that this idea was separate from the religion from which it came. I think he was saying... He's not saying that, but we said that. So you're saying Sam is saying No, no, I'm saying that we said that Jordan's understanding of sacrifice and religion is not, is not the same as what the original authors of the Bible had in mind when they were writing. I see. So if that, so whatever he's trying to keep is something new, something that is his own invention, so the whole argument that this is an old thing, therefore it must have some value, goes out the window because this is a new thing that he's creating. I think... I, I think I see what you're trying to say, but I'm not sure that you know, it all adds together. So, Jordan is abstracting something from the religious tradition, and you're, and you're arguing that what the real religious tradition was, was quite different than what he's abstracting from. Right. I don't see why that's really a problem, right? It's, it goes against all of his arguments. No, he's... 
So what, what Brett would have brought up is that the lie was necessary at certain points of time, and in this case, the lie would be the lie would be that these things were literally true, and you should literally sacrifice your son. And what Jordan would say is, or what Brett would say is, that was the non-literally true lie. But the abstractions that come from it are loose. But those are new abstractions that we are making up right now. That wasn't our original intention. I'm not sure that there is. They're probably not entirely new to us. They probably have been around a little bit longer than that. But I mean, religious thinkers are probably have post post enlightenment. Post enlightenment. Perhaps I. Yeah, that's, that's relatively new. So. I guess to me that begs the question, why in the world humans couldn't operate with just the abstractions in the past, but perhaps operating from the abstractions isn't better, right? So if you, if you take... I want to get to the next slide, but, but you mentioned that you had a question that you, because the Q&A was caught. By the way, that's, that was written, so I don't know. You're, you're, you yeah, know. I'm angry about cutting the Q&A. <laughs> All right, but you, went, you really wanted to ask a question. What was the question yeah, that you wanted to ask? Well, that, is that the whole question? Yeah, it's just four sentences. All right, so the question would have been, do you think that intelligence itself, in the form of AI simulations of the future, might replace evolution by natural selection, and also the cycles of chaos, war, catastrophe, and rebirth, as the means of progression to higher order? Can we confine stochasticity and chaos to a subordinate universe via simulation, in a way that we can benefit from it without catastrophe. Might limitations of the human brain make it necessary to do this, such that we can overcome local minima solutions that are byproducts of human limitations? And then at the end, I talk about um, AlphaGo and AI, um, where was it Denise Hassan, who's in front of a uh, neuroscientist who talks about how AlphaGo was able to make this move that had never been made by any human in 3,000 years when it played in the In other words, it played on the fifth line of the board instead of the third board. And the common traditional wisdom was that this is an absolutely terrible move and that no one should do it. But it made it, I think, like 100 years before the end of the match, and they found out that this is what caused him to win. So he blew up 3,000 years of tradition with an, a with an AI simulation, implying that the use of artificial intelligence may be necessary for us to bypass some of these impossible, uh, to bypass current cultural situations. So that's a, that's our Sam, right? Well, that was for all. Of them. That's for all of them. I mean, because Sam is really interested in AI, and Jordan is very interested in chaos and order. And I kind of want to bring those things together and, in some ways, subordinate them to intelligence, which I think is really the model. It's a mini model of all of them, right? Okay, sounds good, man. That was good. What was your name again? Kevin Stevens. All right, thank you, man. That was great. That was great.